Hello, dear friends. This is Yule Humphreys. I'm so glad to be with you today <clears throat> share another message with you from the Bible. Now, from the Word of God, I want to share about a 10-minute message, and I believe it'll be a message that will bless your heart and your life. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I pray God's blessings on it. These little messages going out all over the world for the glory of God. I'm going to speak to you on a description of love. Love is the greatest Great, one of the greatest things in our lives is love. The Bible says now abides faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. And so love is so great. I want to read to you first from the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians. Beginning in verse 4 it says love is patient. Love is patient. <clears throat> and love is kind. It does not envy it does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It does not, uh, it is not self-seeking. And it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. Oh, praise God. Love never fails. So here's a good description of love in the Word of God. And this love comes from God. It's not the kind of human love that we experience in life. No, no, this is a love that is born of God, agape love. And it's the kind of love I hope and pray that you have in your life. This kind of love, love is patient. <clears throat> it's patient, very patient. It waits on God and it is patient. It is patient. It keeps looking for another chance for someone. Love is patient. It waits and waits. And it endures. It endures. So we need to be patient. We need to wait on the Lord and be patient. And then love is kind. It is not harsh, nor hard, nor cruel, but it's kind. Love is always marked by kindness. How much kindness is exhibited in your life? And whatever others may do, you have to secure the fact that this is something that you have to do. Whatever others do. This is a word but between you and the Lord. And then the Bible says it does not envy. Love doesn't desire something that somebody else has. But rather opposite love is glad to see someone else have something nice. Love is never rude. It does is not it is not uh, rude. It is not self seeking not self-seeking. That is, it doesn't seek after things for itself so much as for others. Over in the Bible, in Luke, the ninth chapter, one of my favorite verses and one of the most difficult to, to practice on a daily basis is the teaching of Jesus in verse 23 and 24. Then Jesus said to them, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. And so you need to learn to do this, dear Christian. Deny yourself. That is, put self out of the picture altogether. And take up your cross daily. And the cross daily is following after the will of God instead of your will. Instead of saying, Lord, this is what I want, we need to say, Lord, what do you want? Lead me in your will, Lord. It is a seeking to bear a cross because we're denying self and seeking the way and the will of God. And then he says, and to follow me. For whoever will save his life will lose it. That is, if you do everything you want your way, you're going to lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, you'll find it. To lose your life for his sake is to put him first in your life and let him be the Lord of your life as best you can. And when you do that, you'll find peace and you'll find power, and you'll find hope, and you'll want to tell others, and you'll find the strength that only God can give you. When you have weakness, it turns into strength when you look to Him. And when you find there is darkness, it turns to light when you turn it over to Jesus Christ. I want you to pray a brief prayer with me, and ask the Lord to come into your heart if you've never prayed this prayer. If you're not sure you're going to heaven, I want you to pray a brief prayer with me, for the Bible says, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
pray this prayer and ask God to forgive you and Jesus to come into your heart as the Lord of your life. Say, Dear God, please forgive me. I believe in Jesus. I believe He died for me. I believe He rose again. I believe He's coming back. Come in my heart and help me live for you as the Lord of my life. Thank you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Pray that prayer and you can know that you're going to be right with Him and you'll know the love of God in your life. For the Holy Spirit will come into your life and He will bring the love of God. The Bible says in Romans the 5th chapter, Hope does not disappoint us because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. And so He brings that love in our heart. Praise God. Find your good church and, and join a church and be baptized if you haven't been. And find your good church and worship with God's people. Read your Bible and pray every day that you can. This is so important. Then the other thing is, it says that the Bible says that love is, is love is not proud and not boast itself. The Bible says over in James the fourth chapter, in verse uh, four it says, "But, but he says, God give us more grace." For the Scripture has said, "God opposes and resists the proud, but He gives grace to the humble." God opposes and resists the proud. So seek not to be proud because you're coming against God Almighty. And He gives grace to the humble. He loves the humble person, the person that doesn't feel that he's the greatest, but feels that others are even better than he is. The person that humbles himself before God will be lifted up. The person that humbles himself before God will find a way out and find a way in. And he'll find that which money can never buy. And God wants to give that to you right now. He wants to give you the peace that passes understanding. He wants to help you find a way that pleases God and pleases you and pleases others. But it comes when you turn your life over to him and find this wonderful love of God. The wonderful love of God. Then he says again in this wonderful scripture in 1 Corinthians 13, Love Love does not delight itself in evil. It rejoices in the truth. Love is not easily angered. It's not easily angered. You don't lose your temper very often when you have the love of God taking over your life. Because when you get the love of God, you don't get angry easily. If you have a problem with temper, leveraging your temper, just go to God and say, Lord, I need more of your love. Because love causes a person not to be angry easily. And then it says that love is not, does, not, does not keep a record of wrongs. Love, your love forgives. Oh, quit holding that grudge against somebody, dear friend. It does not hurt anyone more than it's hurting you. And you have the right not to, to call upon God and ask Him for mercy, but you don't have the right to hold grudges against anybody. Because, you see, God has forgiven you so many things. You must forgive others. You need to forgive others. And so that's important. And when you do that, then the Lord will bless you. And you'll have, a, you'll have a love and you'll have a message to tell to the nations. Oh, praise God, a message to tell to the nations. A message of love and mercy and light. Oh, praise God, a message that will turn the wrong into the right. And then the darkness shall turn to the dawning and the dawning to noonday bright. And Christ's great kingdom shall come to earth a kingdom of love and light. Praise God. Praise God. And that's what we need. That's what we need. Let love have His way. I want you to know something. God loves you very much. He loves you so much that He says, Even as a bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so does the Lord rejoice over you, saith the Lord. Dear Christian friend, the Lord loves you. He loves you so much. He loves you more than a bridegroom can love his bride. I like the story told of this young man that was going with a young lady and they were both in love with each other. And he said, I want to take you out to dinner tonight again. And he took her out to dinner and he had a big box 
with a bow on it, and he said, I bought you a present. Oh, she said, wonderful. Ah, big box. He said, now I want you to wait till we get through eating to look at it. And so all the time they were eating, she was wondering, what in the world has he got in that big box? But she finally got through eating, and he said, now you can open it. And she opened it, and it was a pillow, a pillow. And she thought, well, she couldn't help but be disappointed. And she looked at this pillow. But he said, wait a minute. And he reached over and took the pillow and they put it down at her feet. And then he kneeled on that pillow and he said to her, would you marry me? She said, I kept that pillow. I kept that pillow. I've kept it for years. Oh, because it meant so much to her heart for him to ask her to marry her. And so God comes to you and he loves you. And he sometimes brings something that you quite quite understand at start, but it's something that is symbolic of his love for you. So let him make sure that you have the love of God in your heart. And know the Lord loves you. I love you, and I pray God's blessings on you. In the name of Jesus, our beloved Lord. Amen.